my, again, my four types of slopes. We have our positive slope, as if I was walking uphill. Negative slope, as if I was walking downhill. Zero slope, because there's no incline, it's flat. And undefined, because I can't walk across this line. It would be I'd have to climb, and so that's not what we're doing, we're walking. Undefined. That's what slope guide can help us out with. Number 23 on your uh, green piece of paper is there all the time for you to realize the four types of slopes. Now, what we have to do today is calculate our slopes. So back on the actual notes that we'll glue in on the next page here, because you, now you have slope guide written down. We're going to take three sections here. Um, when you fold it, you have a graph, you have an equation, and you have a table slash ordered pairs. We're gonna do each of these three sections one at a time, so there's a little bit of flipping going on today, so stay with me. We're gonna start with a graph. If we are calculating the slope, which I'm now gonna start calling the mm slope because the slope letter in my equations is always gonna be M, because in some language when we invented math, either Arabic or Greek, I can't remember, or Latin, the word for slope started with M, but in English it starts with S. So slope is M. And when we're finding the mm, slope from a graph, all we have to do is find good points, and we're going to count the rise and the run between those two points, which means I'm going to find out how much I either went up or down and to the right only. And I'm going to put those numbers as if they were a fraction and call it a day. That's my slope. So we're going to go up and down and put it above the number that we run to the right. Rise over run. Yeah, you've done this before. We're just doing it again in a high school context. So I'm probably going to make it harder. Uh-oh. No. Maybe not. Let's look at the graphs. <laughs> so flip it over. We're just going to do like one section at a time here. <coughs> now when I'm talking about find good points, what do I mean about find good points? The ones that are on the line. Yeah, the ones that are on the line, easy to see, that are in like a corner, I guess. So right here, that's like in the corner of a, a coordinate grid. I could I easily identify its x and y value. I need two of them, so I'm going to find another good point, which looks to be like right there. Do you agree that those are pretty good points? Yeah. Cool. All I have to do is count the rise and the run in between them, and I've calculated my slope. To get to the same level, how do I get from that first point to the second point? Down, down, one. down one. So I went down one. And how much did I have to run to get to the same point? One, two, three. I went, I went over three. So my slope, my mm slope, is the rise over the run. Negative one over three. And like literally that's it. We've done this before, right? Looks familiar? We've slept since then. It's been a couple of years. But we've done this before. Not hard. But we're going to put it in real world context, which is where it gets really cool. If you, if you scoot over to number two, which is the question about the helicopter. Huh? The graph shows the height in meters of a helicopter as it descends X seconds. What does the word descend mean? Go down. Go down. So our helicopter, is it taking off or landing? Landing. landing. Cool. So let's look at this graph. It looks like it's landing because it's going down. Sweet. What kind of, what, what of the four types of slopes should I have here? I should have a negative slope because it's going downwards. I'd be walking downhill on this line. All right. The question asks me to find the rate of change. What did I say the word rate of change really means? Slope. slope. So if it bothers you to see the words rate of change, you can cross it out and write slope. If you're like, I got it, you don't have to change that at all. But if it helps you, write slope there so you know what you're looking for. Now, this is a graph. And we're finding slope or rate of change from a graph. We just find two good points and we start counting. Okay. Here's a good point. And it doesn't matter which other good point you use, so I'm going to use this one because it's a good point that I see. There are plenty of good points on this graph. I, just, I have chosen that one. How much did I rise to go from the first one to the second one? Three. Three. Ooh, I heard I went, I went what, three? Ten. Three. <laughs> the increments. Did I go down up or down? Three. I went down three. Well, I went down three boxes. What does each box represent here? Five. Five. If two of them are ten right here, what's one of them? 
five. So I went down five, 10, 15. Yeah, we gotta check our, our units now. I'm gonna do that to you. I'm gonna give you weird units. Wahaha. No. I said no. Okay, so I went down 15. How much did I run? Three. So I went over three boxes, but each box is one. So cool, I went over three which means my mm slope, which is found by putting the rise over the run, is negative 15 over three. Well, if it's a fraction that I can reduce, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce it. What is negative 15 thirds? Or negative 15 divided by three? It's gonna be negative five. So my slope is negative five over one, or just the number negative five. Honestly, both of those are fine for me. You could leave it as a fraction with an over one on it. I'm not gonna be mad about that at all, but it is just the whole number negative five. Okay, so if you get a fraction, you can reduce. I do want it reduced, but you can leave it in fraction form over one or whatever, whatever the simplest fraction form is. Now, we need to interpret or explain this rate of change. What does this mean for my helicopter in real life? It's going down. It's going to go down. But a rate of change is talking about a rate like miles per hour, feet per second, meters per second. Those are all explaining what? Distance. Distance, time, so close. When you're driving in a car and I'm saying I'm going 60 miles per speed, 60 miles per hour is speed. So if I'm saying this helicopter descends and I have meters per second, I'm talking about its speed. So how fast is this helicopter going down? Here's how we'd interpret this. And this is weird. This is why I'm feeding this to you. The helicopter descends at five meters per second. I have written this down correctly, but I'm gonna get some questions. The main question I'm gonna get is, Ms. Quigley, you said the answer was negative five and you just wrote down five meters per second. Can anyone tell me why that's still okay? In, in that, what's that? You said descends. I said descends, is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, what does descend mean? Down. Go down, so the word descend tells me in real life that this number is gonna be going down, right? That means I've taken care of the negative side by the word descend. If my helicopter was going up, what word would I use here? Ascend or going up or lift off. Any of those words that landing, going down, descending, uh, all of those words mean I'm going literally my helicopter is landing, going down. So I know the number is negative. Okay, cool. We've interpreted a real life slope. Slopes are cool, guys. We see them everywhere. Can we go back to the very front cover so close it up? We're gonna look at slope from another setting. You're gonna have to identify slope from an equation. There's two things I need to point out about this for you. I said the slope was the mm slope because guess what letter is still slope? Mm -hmm. The mm, yeah, the mm slope is the m. What do you notice about the m? What is it next to? Your slope is always gonna be next to the variable x, okay? Now, the reason I want to point another thing out to you is, what do you notice about the beginning of this equation? Oh, snaps. You remember earlier when I said we have to remember how to solve for y? It happens here. We cannot talk about the mm slope until our equation says y equals, which is why we spent time learning how to solve for y. And this is when we start using it. We're gonna have to do that today. But the gist of it here is if you find the mm slope, it is always right here next to the x. Not including the x, just the mm number right in front of it. The mm slope, okay? Open this up, let's, let's look at the practice problems, okay? Number three has three questions on it. What's the mm slope for the first one? Um, <laughs> Everyone says, um, the mm slope is the number that's next to the x. What's the number next to the x? Three. Right now, you don't have to do anything with the plus 2. Next class, we're going to talk about it. It's technically called the y-intercept, and we will get there. But we're just focused on the slope today, which is the mm slope. So my mm slope would be 3, or how do I write 3 as a fraction? 3 over 1. Any whole number that I want to be a fraction is over 1. Yeah, 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 no. We're ignoring that this is a totally different. 
This is called a y-intercept, so we can ignore the two. Any of the plus numbers that don't have an x next to it are not part of my slope at all. We will get to where we need to worry about that next time. What is the mm, slope for the second equation? Negative 1 over 3, because that's the number directly in front of the x. Challenge question. What's the mm, slope of the third one? Oh, didn't we say that the x, the slope is right in front of the x? Like right in front of the x? Ooh, that's not a highlighter. So negative 1. Guys, isn't there an invisible 1 sitting here in front of the x? If you don't see the coefficient of the x, there's a 1 there. In fact, this one's a negative 1 because that negative is there. So you don't see a large number sitting here in front of the 1. My m slope is 1. So we'd say our m slope is 1. Or how do I write negative 1 as a fraction? One over one. Negative, one. negative 1 over 1. Tight. Awesome. Pretty simple, right? Now, if we look at number 4, though, you can't tell me about the m slope right away. Why can't you tell me about the m slope right away for number 4? We haven't solved for the m. Mm. Remember, these equations have to... <laughs> have to say y equals so that we can do this. Does this say y equals? No. no, it says 3x plus y equals. So we have to learn how to, we have to remember how to solve for y. This is why we learned this skill. Okay, so do this one with me. Just like we did on our test the other day. We're gonna draw our line and I label my sides y and everything else. What's the everything else term from the y side that needs to disappear and go away? 3x. So I take it and I'm going to move it across that center line. But when it crosses that center line, it changes the sign. Yeah, it becomes a negative. That, that skill still is there. Okay, so we write down everything we have. We have y equal, uh, can I combine 17 and 3, negative 3x? No, so I just write them down next to each other. Doesn't matter the order that you write it down, but as long as you keep them separated, it's great. I like the x coming first, but it's not wrong if the x comes second. Oh, sweet. Do I have to divide by anything on this one? No, the y is already by itself, so I don't have to do that last step of division. And what is my m slope? Negative 3. Negative 3 is next to the x, so that's the m slope that I'm going to say is my rate of change. So I'd say my slope is negative 3 or negative 3 over 1 because we had to move it over. So if we didn't move this over before we talked about the slope, we would have answered the wrong number. It has to be solved for y first. That's why we do that skill. Now we still need to interpret this. Oh, we didn't talk about what the equation was, my bad. This equation represents a drone height uh, as it's descending to the ground. So instead of a helicopter, we, this time we have a drone. So how would we interpret m equals negative three for this drone? We would say the drone descends three what are we measuring in this time feet per second yeah yay physics we're talking about it in math science is math and math is science what yeah that's why that's why science is cool because math is cool and that's why math is cool because science is cool the, the drone dis, which the drone my bad drone descends my bad I write in cursive I also have sloppy handwriting so I get it it's not sloppy, it's just you write cursive, and I can rarely understand oh, My bad. All right, when we get this, close it up, because we have one more way to find mm slope that's going to be super helpful, and for a lot of us, this is the one that we use. Because number 11 on your formula chart, your green piece of paper, is the formula, I'll, I'll scoot it over in a second, is the formula we're going to use for both a table and an ordered pair. So look at your green piece of paper for uh, formula number 11. It is called slope of a line, so it's there for you. Check out number 11. It is going to be on your formula chart that you will have on your desk and on your star test all year long. So this might be the one for you. The formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's my slope for this line. 
Yeah, it looks familiar, right? We should we should have done this before. <laughs> you probably did. You just don't remember. What's nice is that either a table or ordered pairs, this works. So for my ordered pairs, oh, that's an X. I can still do Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Because tables are just ordered pairs and cute little tables. And ordered pairs come from tables. So this works for both tables or ordered pairs. We're going to do both tables first, and then we'll go do both ordered pairs. So stick with me on that. This is formula number 11, so you're going to constantly be looking at it. If we're given a table like number 5, and we're asked for the mm, slope, all we have to do is find the first y, the second y, the first x, the second x. I like to label them because that helps me out. So in this table, I would say, all right, here's the first x, here's the second x, because that's the x side of my table. Here's the first y, and here's the second y, because that's the y side of my table. Those are exactly the numbers I'm going to use in this formula. I'm going to write down the m slope one more time just so I, we have it on this side. You don't have to write it right now because you're looking at your formula chart, but I'm not. All right, let's put the pieces where they belong. What did we label as x2? Uh, four. Zero. Four. Okay, so here's four. What did we label as y1? We label 2 as y1. It's OK. What did we label as x2? 0. What did we label as x1? Negative So we plug it in. Now, I just told you at the beginning of the class that our biggest mistake is that negative time negative is a what? OK, let's make sure we do that. So if we're minusing a minus, it's negative times negative. Subtract a subtraction. That's confusing. We're just going to put plus 5. Simplify it down so your brain can do it. Your brain can do all of these things. You don't need a calculator here. 0 minus negative 5 is just like saying 0 plus 5. Yeah, so we, if we calculate this, my m mm slope, 4 minus 2 is, and 0 plus 5 is, sweet. There's my m mm slope for this table using my formula. Uh, yes, if you needed it on the calculator. Separately, you, do them on you do 4 minus 2, and then you do 0 minus negative 5, or 0 plus 5. And you take the top number divided by the bottom number, but I need it as a fraction. No, there's that there when it looks like last year, our teacher told us how to... Stat edit, we're not using that. But yes, I do know how to do that. We're not using that until it actually comes in handy. You don't understand anything when you use stat edit. This is teaching you what slope is. The changes in the y's over the changes in the x's. That's why it's called rate of change. Okay? Okay, let's try this other table. This table shows a linear relationship between the balance of a student's savings account and the number of weeks he has been saving. That makes sense. So he's saving money. We need to figure out the rate of change for this table. So we label the table first. We at least need to know which is the x's and which is the y's. So the weeks are the x's, and the balance is the y's. I have all the information right there. I can plug it in my formula. My mm slope formula asks for the y2. What's y2? Minus y1, which is over x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0. Right? I'm just getting these out of the table here. I have 39 as y2 minus 32, which is y1, 1 minus 0. All right, let's do that. Brain, because our, our brain can handle it. We don't need a calculator. What's 39 minus 2? What's 1 minus 0? So really, we either get seven, uh, one, well, 7 over 1 or 7 as my rate of change. But we need to talk about what this means in real life. Interpret or explain this rate of change. What are we? What is this table representing again? Uh, savings, account. savings account, and we have dollars and weeks 
So what does this mean about this person who's saving? She saves $7 per week. That's literally it. Um, they save... Oh, that's a highlighter. They save $7 per week. That's what this rate of change is meaning. My bank account, or if I was this person, my bank account every week is growing by seven. What, from zero to one, I go up seven. So I'm putting $7 in every week. Let me show you that this still works whenever we are just given ordered pairs, which is essentially what a table is. There's just a bunch of ordered pairs in a table. We only have two ordered pairs here. We want to find the slope, the mm slope, of a line that passes through those points. Let's label again. In a coordinate pair, what comes first? It's always x comma y. So that means that we're going to have x1 and y1, because those are the first pair of coordinates, x, y. And then x2 and y2, because those are the second pair of coordinates, x comma y. Isn't that all the information I had out of that table? The same formula works. Here's my m-slope formula. We have m equal to, what's y2? Eight. Eight. What's y1? So uh, minus, minus, I'll change that in a second. What's x2? Five. And x1? Three. Okay, I have minus and minus. What do I change that to? A plus. A plus. So really this is 8 plus 20. What's not negative? It was. We did minus a negative, but that's confusing to see minus a negative. So we say, okay, minus a negative, really, I know that that's positive 20. And so it's easier to do in my brain. What is 8 plus 20? 28. And then 5 minus 3 is 28 divided by 2. Can I reduce that? Twenty-eight divided by two is fourteen, so I can answer as fourteen over one, or just straight up fourteen. That's a very steep line. If, if four looked like it'd be hard to walk up, think about fourteen; it'd be like, ooh, all of the calories burning. Let's prove it to ourselves. We know how to use this formula. This last one, number eight, is for you. I want you to try it. Okay, try to find me the slope of the line that passes through those two points. And you know what? I'm gonna zoom out so you can look at number seven while we do it. So follow along with me as we do this. All right, we're finding the slope of a line that passes through these points. I highly recommend labeling. It's super helpful, okay, because if you start missing these, just you got to put pieces where they belong, okay? My formula for mm slope says that I need to figure out what the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is. y2, y1, x2, x1. Oh, I got double negative. Okay. If you labeled your first one as two and your second one as one, you will end up with the right answer. So don't worry if you did them backwards. If I do two minus two, what do I get? Zero. And negative three plus four? One. What is zero divided by one? one. No, zero. Oh, this is a zero slope. What type of line did we say was a zero slope? It's one of my four types. A straight, a straight line flat across. This would be super easy to walk across because there's no slope on it. Yeah. So this process works for any of the types of slopes we might get. Random bonus before I let you go. Who remembers what this type of slope was called? Uh, undefined. undefined. Five points on your notes. What's up? Okay. Are there any last minute questions on slope before we let you practice some on your own? No. Okay. Glue this into your spiral.